welcome. So, in the last lecture, we have introduced this notion, uh, the rational part of x, which is equal to x minus the integer part of x. And then we have seen that if uh, gamma is in q, then if we consider n gamma, then this going to this sequence is going to take finitely value after certain times, it is going to repeat itself. Uh, like gamma is equal to p by q, then when you are taking n to be q plus 1, uh, then uh, q plus 1 p by q is again p rational part of p by q. However, what we have seen that if gamma belongs to r minus q irrational, then n 1 of gamma rational part of this is not equal to n 2 of gamma if n 1 is not equal to n 2. That means, they are distinct. So, so, obviously, the sequence consists of infinitely many numbers. Now, natural question is that is it dense? Natural to ask is the sequence n gamma is dense in 0 1. Okay. So, as a matter of fact, we are going to prove much more than this and towards this, let me define first what I mean by a sequence to be equidistributed. You remember that uh, dense means if I take any open subinterval of 0 1, this is going to contain at least one element of this sequence, then it is dense. Now, what we are going to see equidistributed, that means the distribution of the sequence is kind of uh, equally distributed in every uh, sub interval of 0 1. So, we say that a sequence j n is equidistributed in 0 1 if I take the cardinality if of all such n such that j n the first capital N members of this belonging to some sub interval a b divided by capital N, then the limit N goes to infinity is equal to b minus a for every sub interval contained in 0 1. So, that means, if I take then the number of the elements what it is going to contain in the n going larger and larger, the ratio the divided by n is b minus of a. Now, clearly, if xi n is equidistributed then j n is dense. So, what we are 
saying is that is obvious because uh, obviously there will always present one j n in every sub interval a b if you take then automatically it is dense. However, the eq distributed is much more than just the density. There can be sequence which are dense, uh, but it may not be equidistributed. That means, it is it is kind of we are in the equidistribution, we are uh, giving lot of importance about the positioning of the sequence. So, this one can see let R n be an enumeration of rationals in 0 1. Now, define j n to be r n by 2 if n is even and 0 if n is odd. That means, the sequence j n will look like in the first it is 0, then this is r 1 in the second position, in the third position I am putting again 0, this is r 2 0, r 3 0, r 4 like this. So, obviously, this j n is going to contain all the rationals, hence it is going to be dense in 0 1. Now, let us see that whether this is equidistributed or not. Now, if I take the cardinality of the first element j n belongs to 0 1. If I am taking, so obviously, how many in the first n I am going to get n by 2. So, this is nothing but n by 2. Therefore, so limit n goes to infinity, this is uh, this is lesser equal to n by 2 and then this is uh, cardinality of is lesser equal to half which is strictly less than 1 because uh, this sequence half of the sequence is concentrated at 0 that is uh, sequence j n. So, this is not equidistributed however, it is dense. So, now what we claim is that this if uh, if gamma belongs to r minus uh, gamma is is in yeah r minus q irrational then n gamma is equidistributed. So, this we are going to prove as an application of a very uh, beautiful and powerful characterization of equidistributed sequences by Weil. So, now what is the Weil's criterion? This is uh, a sequence j n is equidistributed
in 0 1 if and only if for every integer k not equal to 0 limit n goes to infinity 1 by n summation n equal to 1 to n e to the power 2 pi i k j n this goes to 0. So, if let us say if we assume this condition for a moment then whether we are going to get that our sequence n gamma this is going to be equidistributed or not. Now, look at suppose so by assuming this result we have one can n gamma is equidistributed. Okay. So, now as you can see, so I will consider n equal to 1 to n e to the power 2 pi i k and this n gamma, this one can write it as n equal to 1 to n e to the power 2 pi i k n gamma minus bracket of n gamma. So, n gamma bracket this is the greatest integer. So, that is going to be 1. So, this is n equal to 1 to n e to the power 2 pi i k n gamma. Now, this is a geometric sum and we can uh, compute this. So, this in fact is e to the power 2 pi i k n plus 1 gamma minus of 1 divided by e to the power 2 pi i k uh, gamma minus 1 then I will add for n equal to 0 term I can add 1. So, this is what it is going to and remember that gamma is an irrational number. So, the denominator can never be equal to 0, denominator can never be equal to 1 and it is uh, uh, for a fixed k this gamma this uh, for a fixed fixed k and gamma mod of e to the power 2 pi i k gamma minus 1 is greater than some delta which is bigger than 0. Therefore, this entire thing is uh, as n goes to infinity if I take 1 by n of n equal to 1 to n e to the power 2 pi i k rational part of n gamma this is equal to 1 by n into e to the power 2 pi i k n plus 1 gamma minus of 1 divided by e to the power 2 pi i k gamma minus 1 this is a bounded quantity which is bounded by 2 plus 1 you can take it to be 3 uh, over delta that is a finite number. So, this goes to 0 as n goes to infinity. So, by applying 
the Wiles criterion, we can get that uh, n gamma this is equi equidistributed. So, now let us uh, get into this. So, this we ca can get provided we assume this. Now, let us prove the Wiles criterion. Now, as you can see in order to show a sequence is uh, going to be equidistributed, that means uh, what we need to compute is cardinality of the first n such that j n this belongs to a b. Now, how I am going to uh, find uh, the cardinality of this set j uh, n is uh, in a b. Okay. So, now suppose if, if I take my j n to be n gamma or that means, what we are saying we are kind of finding this is nothing but summation n equal to 1 to n uh, chi of a b of j n. Now, this if this j n is uh, uh, that means, I have 0 1 a b. So, how many j n s are there that is what I am going to get in the first n and I take the sum that is what the cardinality is. Okay. So, we would like to show that this so 1 by n 1 by n this must go to b minus of a that means, this I can rewrite is indicator function of a b of t d t, where the indicator function or characteristic function is defined as usual process 1 if x belongs to a b and is equal to 0 otherwise. Okay. So, now we are assuming So, we are assuming summation over n equal to 1 to n e to the power 2 pi i k xi n 1 over n this goes to 0 for k not equal to 0. And you can if k is equal to 0, then you can see that 1 by n summation over n from 1 to n e to the power 2 pi i k is 0 dot xi n this is nothing but equal to 1. That is again the integration of the constant function 1 in 0 1. Okay, so, now if uh, let p be a polynomial. trigonometric polynomial rather t b a trigonometric polynomial that means p of t can be written as summation over minus m to m some alpha m e to the power 2 pi i m t that is what uh, one can see. So, now this is given to be 0 and you can see that integral of 0 to 1 uh, p t d t if we are going to take then by the orthogonality relationship of e to the power 2 pi i 
m we have seen that this is going to be equal to alpha 0 the coefficient with the constant 1 right and uh, and that is essentially uh, at the 0 th coefficient what I am saying. So, now if I look at 1 by n summation over n equal to 1 to n p of j n this is equal to 1 by n uh, summation uh, over n equal to 1 to n then the summation over uh, minus m to m alpha m or rather I can change this to alpha k for the convenience of the symbol. So, now this is alpha k e to the power 2 pi i k xi n. Now, this is equal to 1 over n. then I take this alpha n equal to 1 to n and uh, e to the power 2 pi i k j n right. So, now this thing if k is not equal to 0 then this goes to 0 and if uh, k is equal to 0 then this goes to 1 that is what we have seen. So, now this goes to uh, only k equal to 0 term is going to survive over here and in which the limit will take the value 1. Therefore, this is nothing but alpha 0 which is integral over 0 to 1 p t d t. So, so far so good. Now, if we have uh, this relationship for the polynomial next we will prove next step. claim is if f is a continuous one periodic function then 1 by n summation over n equal to 1 to capital N f of j n this converges to integral 0 to 1 f t d t. Okay, so, we have this relationship holds for if f is replaced by a trigonometric polynomial. So, now we would uh, like to prove for continuous function. Now, what we have seen in this Fourier series course that uh, if f is a continuous function, then uh, there exists a sequence of uh, polynomial which converges to f in the uniform way. So, in other words, if f is continuous, one periodic then for every epsilon positive there exists a trigonometric polynomial p 
such that supremum over x belongs to 0 1 mod of f of x minus p of x is less than epsilon. That is what by the application of the fair theorem, this is what uh, we have uh, done. Okay. So, now, so what we will do over here is uh, therefore, now you look at 1 by n summation over n from 1 to capital N p of xi n minus or rather minus of this. So, this is going to be less or equal to 1 by n, n equal to 1 to capital N mod of f of j n minus p of j n. Now, this is less than epsilon into 1 by n into n because supremum over this is finite. So, therefore, this is pretty small, we can control this. So, hence what we want to look at summation over n equal to 1 to n f of xi n minus integral over 0 to 1 f of t dt, this is lesser equal to 1 by n summation n from 1 to n f of xi n minus 1 by n n from 1 to n p of xi n plus minus 0 to 1 p of t dt plus 0 to 1 p t dt minus integral 0 to 1 f t dt. Now, the convergence is uniform that is what we have seen in the first part is small this is less than epsilon and now this we have observed that the condition what we are assuming that the sum of the average of the sum of e to the power 2 pi i k n that goes to 0. So, this goes so this is less than epsilon and again if I push the mod inside then what I am going to get that this is less than epsilon. So, this is less than 3 epsilon for large n. Hence, this converges to that is what we have done it for uh, a continuous function. So, I think this is a good time to stop this lecture and uh, uh, in the next lecture we will see how from the continuous function this result can we can derive the result for indicator function of a b. Thank you.